I'm Tom Bojour, the editor-in-chief of Revolver Magazine. We've actually been covering tools since day one. One of the most important things that Tool decided to do and has managed to do was not play the media game. They've actually managed to maintain an aura of a unit of a band with a mystique. Between Maynard's lyrics and the rhythms and the, the way that the music evolves, that Tool music connects with people on a really massively wide spectrum of levels, which is why fans of theirs remain with them as they evolve. And even with The Perfect Circle, he was more open and, you know, willing to do things on his own because it was his own project. When he's in Tool, Maynard is part of Tool. I think what Maynard has always managed to do is write lyrics that you totally feel his suffering and you feel struggles, his evolution. When you're writing songs and titling them, you know, Stink Fist or Prison Sex, you know that you're pushing buttons, but he is able to connect with people's like inner Beavis and Butthead. When he calls something Stink Fist, he knows that it's disturbing and provocative and opens up a whole can of worms, but he also knows that it's kind of funny. I don't think any of Maynard's fans, at least until recently, had a vision of him as a happy or you know, well-adjusted person. I'm, uh, I'm very resistant to the idea of uh, being a public servant and it being my responsibility to educate, because I'm not really qualified uh, to do any of those things. I write these songs to move through some pain or work out some issues. And if I'm successful in my art and my expression, I shouldn't feel the same way I did when I wrote those songs anymore, and there should be a logical progression. But if, as an artist, I can express myself in some way that ends up helping someone else get through some hard times, I guess that's, I guess that's, a, that's great for everybody. It helps, it helps uh, other people. The problem with the music industry in general is that artists get into it because they have a desire to be desired, and they have a desire to scream their heads off for whatever issue happened to them in the past, they weren't armed with the proper tools to move through any trauma or their child of divorce or, you know, lost their parents. You know, what they do is they end up just kind of screaming their heads off and at some point they get popular and now they're a part of an industry that is run by people who are uneducated emotional people. In a way it's kind of a dead end. In this society we expect those artists to continue screaming to the end of their end of their days. If you don't eventually feel better, then I'm not sure how effective your screaming was and how, how your screaming's gonna help somebody else. So I should work out of those issues and move on to some other challenges. And that's for me what the wine is. I think I've moved through a lot of the problems that I've had in the past. I don't necessarily want to scream my whole life. If the songs don't help me how are they going to help you? So here I am, making wine. It's a much more grounded experience than being in a bus, being surrounded by decadence. <laughs>